How much water can your roof even collect? That's the question that we're asking today, because if you're interested in rainwater harvesting and you're thinking about harvesting rainwater from your roof, you need to know how much capacity your property, your yard, your roof even has. Hi, I'm Daryl. I'm a sustainable landscape designer and the founder of Yard Farmer, which is a sustainable landscape design studio here in Salt Lake City. I'm also a certified rainwater harvesting designer, and a lot of my job is helping clients figure out how much rain they can harvest, how to best go about harvesting it, where that water should go once those tanks and barrels and cisterns are full. We're going to figure out part of that today. This is one video that's going to be part of a multi-part series. There will be math today, but don't worry. I grew up thinking I was terrible at math, and it turns out that it's actually not that difficult. I will do my best to explain it in a way that I best understand as a fellow non-math person, so that if you are yourself not super into doing math, this should hopefully still be fairly manageable for everyone today. This is just going to be one part of many parts where we're focusing on figuring out your total harvesting capacity. We're going to have more videos about other elements of rainwater harvesting design, such as soil drainage rates and so on, but we're just focusing on collecting information today. So without further ado, the math. I've never taught a math class before. I've barely even taken math classes, if I'm being honest. I took the most intro level math classes in college that I could get away with taking, and I have a journalism degree. So that's the level that we're working with today. Do not be fearful. So how much rainwater can you harvest? This will all depend on the size of your roof. What I wanna walk you through first is just some need to know numbers that I want you to collect before we get started so that you're not working with hypotheticals. Your total roof square footage. If you don't know what this is, you can go on Google Earth. There's a measuring tool. I think even Google Maps has a measure distance button when you right click on the browser version, but I typically use Google Earth Pro. And then you'll make a polygon and calculate the total square footage of your roof. You could also just get up there and manually measure, or uh, if you have build plans or a survey or something, you could use that square footage as well. But Google Earth would only take you a matter of minutes or seconds to do. I also then, this is the slightly trickier one, I want you to know the roof square footage that is feeding each downspout. So here's a fake roof, made up roof, that is going to represent uh, for the total roof square footage, a thousand square feet. We're gonna pretend that this is a thousand square feet of roof and each of these orange dots represents a downspout. So it's pretty easy on the back side of the house. You've got roughly 500 square feet of roof rectangle here. Roughly half of it is going there. Roughly half of it is going there. All of that is relatively simple. Roughly 250 square feet of roof feeding this downspout, 250 square feet of roof feeding this one. It might get a little more complicated if you don't have a simple rectangle as a roof. So for example, there's only one downspout here and no downspout here. If you think of this like a dormer with a ridge line, all of this water is likely being collected on a gutter that is then going around this corner and going to this downspout. So this is the square footage that you're calculating for this downspout. This is the square footage that you're calculating for this one. And in this case, this number is going to be higher than this number. You're going to collect that. Then this one is just a Googling thing. You need to figure out what your 100 year storm event total is. So when it's raining about as much as it's ever going to rain in Tucson, Arizona, it's three inches here in Utah, it's about two inches. You can just Google your city, 100 year rainfall, 100 year storm total. Something will typically come up. I also find that weatherspark.com is typically helpful with this. And there's a lot of information for different weather stations near you there. I'm going to put in some filler numbers here so that we're using hypotheticals in this case, but I want you to plug in your own numbers at home. So the total square footage of this roof here, fictionally, is gonna be 1,000. Why was that hard? The total roof square footage here is gonna be 1,000. The roof square footage for each downspout will vary, but in this case, it'll be 250, 250, something else, something else. I'm just gonna work on this today to keep it <laughs> simple for you. And then the 100 year storm total for Utah is gonna be two inches. Once you have those numbers, you're honestly 50% or more of the way there. The first thing you need to know when we start to calculate how much water your roof can harvest is that we are always calculating for one inch of rainfall first, because then you can multiply that by whatever you want. If you want to figure out how many gallons of water you get annually, you can do that by Googling your annual rainfall total in Utah, northern Utah, that's 22 inches. I'm adding this to the numbers you can collect. Or you can multiply that one inch number by two and now you know what your 100 year storm event is. That's important because we wanna make sure that 
when it's raining about as much as it's ever gonna, that we are maximizing our harvesting and that we're capturing all of that water and not wasting it. The other important thing I just want to call out is that we're using imperial measurements today because that's where we live and unfortunately we're forced to. And if you're watching this over in Europe or Australia or literally anywhere else on the planet and you get to do metric, uh, congratulations. Unfortunately, <laughs> we don't. And it's more complicated for us and it just is what it is. So we are going to calculate the volume of water going to first the entire roof, just because that's fun to know. And then we're gonna do 250 square feet so we know how much water we should harvest from this downspout. That is a simple volume calculation. And that's why I'm really like, it's fine. <laughs> Don't be stressed because it's length times width times depth at the end of the day. Length times width is going to be square footage. That's what square footage means. So as long as you know the square footage of these areas, we've already done most of the equation. From there, depth is going to be, we're starting with cubic feet of water. If you imagine your roof like a flat plane, length times width, one inch of water has now landed on it. That's what we're calculating in cubic feet. And then we're gonna convert that to gallons at the end. Again, moment of silence for imperial measurements. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what we have to do, unfortunately. So in this case, using a thousand square feet as the total roof volume, I'm getting down here, hopefully that's fine. So total this number, X equals 1000 square feet times, and this is the same every time. So it's literally, you just have to remember this even if you don't understand the Y of it, times one over 12. That's one inch of rain. And then we're dividing one inch by 12 because there are 12 inches in a foot. And this is what converts it to cubic feet. So 1000 square feet times one over 12. We get that number. I should have done it ahead of time. I think there's a decimal involved. Let me grab my calculator. I already know the answer to this one, but I'm trying to just <laughs> go with you through the process. 1000 square feet times one divided by 12. 83.33333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333
1 over 12, or 1 divided by 12, if that is better. 20.8 cubic feet. We multiply that by 7.48, 155 gallons. If you have a metal roof, leave it at that. If you have an asphalt shingle roof, multiply that by 0 0.9, 140 gallons to this downspout. 140 gallons, I might put a 500 gallon tank at the bottom of this downspout, because then if you think about that, it's gonna take, what, 140? Let's divide. 500 gallon tank divided by 140, 3.57. It'll take three and a half inches of rain to fill up from this downspout, that barrel. And so that's like two major storms or a handful of regular degular storms to fill that up. Then we're gonna plan for overflow and we're gonna figure out where once this barrel is full and there's an overflow spout, where that water's gonna go. And we're gonna talk about that in a different video because honestly, this is enough math for one day, I think. Once you feel good about this, come on back and we'll talk about what to do with all of this information. Bye.